Hi guys, I got a nice short one for you today. This is uh, Unit 1, Section 5, or Tools of Science. So we're going to be talking about some of the major tools that you guys are going to be using, how they're used, how they're properly used, and so on. So what I thought I'd do is give you some pictures of different things that we will typically find around the classroom, and then draw lines trying to match them up. And then just basic introduction to what they are and what they do. So the first one that we have says beaker. And so when you take a look at all of these, which one is the beaker? It would be yeah, this one right there. Beakers come in all sorts of different sizes from 50 milliliters, which is about that big, to 100, 150, 250, 500. Uh, we even have one liter and two liter beakers. Uh, a two liter beaker is almost like one of the big soda bottles that you would buy at the store. So beakers basically used to carry out experiments in, um, measure out volumes of fluids, um, makes it easy to watch things as they happen because uh, the fact that they're made out of glass and see-through. You can also cook things on them. The type of glass is called Pyrex, which is able to withstand boiling or really hot temperatures. And so we will be using beakers for many, many things during our, our experience. experiment. Next one is called an Erlenmeyer flask, and that would be this dude right here. It's very similar to a beaker. Um, has more of a triangular shape and a narrow top. What this narrow top allows it to do is to put um, stoppers inside. <coughs> Either a no-hole stopper if we want a reaction to occur and stay inside, or sometimes they have little holes in them, and you can put tubes, like glass tubing, through them, and then if you want to funnel whatever they produce into something else. One of the things we do is uh, do fermentation, where we take apple juice and have it make uh, alcohol, not drinkable alcohol, it's pretty nasty. Um, but one of the byproducts of the experiment is carbon dioxide, and we want to measure that. So we have the little yeasty guys in here doing their thing, and they make carbon dioxide, which gets funneled out of here, and then comes out of a tube and into, say, a beaker and then we can actually count the bubbles as it pops out from the um, underneath the water. So Erlenmeyer flasks either we use when we want to measure something coming off of it or we just ran out of beakers. It works the same. Test tubes we've got yeah, right there. Test tubes usually come in glass and are easily broken so you gotta be careful. Any of these things that you see here if you break them you buy them so you gotta be super careful with them. Um, these are really good for doing small-scale experiments. You can um, you know, put something in here, fill it up with water or a chemical indicator, see if it changes colors, and that'll tell you something about this. So in a couple of weeks when we start learning about organic molecules, that's one of the things we do is we test food items to see if they're composed of proteins, lipids, um, or um, what am I missing, carbohydrates, by putting them in a beaker, sorry, a test tube, and then putting um, some indicator on it and seeing if they change colors or not. We have lots of different sizes of test tubes depending on how much we, how big we need it. If the sample is very small or very big, we have about three or four different sizes of test tubes to choose from. Next one is called a graduated cylinder, which would be these guys right here. We've got these little cute 10 milliliter ones, uh, 25, 50s, we even have up to 100 milliliters. Uh, we even have a 1,000 milliliter or 1 liter um, graduated cylinder for measuring big stuff, but we typically stick with these smaller guys. Obviously, what they're used for is measuring. So if I need 10 milliliters of water poured onto solution A, you know, then I'm going to use this guy to fill it up with water, measure up to the 10 mark, and it's got a little pour spout you can see right there, which makes it really easy to pour. So these are mainly used just for measuring. Just like in the kitchen, you would use um, measuring cups, or, um, but in, well, sometimes we use those, but mostly we are, we're going to use graduate cylinders. Petri dishes, yeah, these guys right there come in either glass or plastic, depending on what we're going to be doing with them. Petri dis dishes are good for little small scale experiments. So like I could put a pea in here and I can watch it grow inside of my Petri dish. Um, and big one, the main thing you probably see them for is growing bacteria. And so you'll see uh, a thin layer of something called auger. 
Auger is uh, food for the bacteria and a place for them to grow. And then what happens is after a while, little colonies of bacteria start to grow on top. So we use it for all sorts of different things. It's just a great way to do little small scale experiments. And then we have stir rods, which are just tubes of plastic, sorry, glass, and they're exactly what they sound like. You use them to stir stuff up. That's it, nothing really exciting there. <laughs> and then the last one we have is called a mortar and a pestle, which are these two things right here. You see these in, um, oh, like old apothecaries and things like that. Uh, what it is used for is if you have a chunk of something, you put it inside, and if you wanna turn it into a fine powder, then you use this guy right here to squish it up into a nice little fine powder. Um, pharmacists use this all the time. Um, trying to think of who else. They're the main guys. But we will use it for extracting things. So one of the things we do is to get uh, the green pigment chlorophyll out of leaves. And using this guy is a great way to do it. Put a couple leaves in there, squish it up real uh, nice, and then you can extract the pigment out of the plant. Okay, so these are some of the tools. Let's see what else we got. Measuring tools, we always have to measure stuff. So one of the first things we do is a thermometer. Uh, thermometers that we use are always gonna be measured in Celsius. So we'll give you the conversion scale if you wanna see what it is in Fahrenheit. But in science, we always, always use a metric no matter what. Um, we don't use Fahrenheit, we don't use feet or inches. We don't use pounds. We always, always use metric. So all of our thermometers will always be in Celsius. We have a meter stick, not a yard stick. That doesn't count. It's a meter stick. It's got one meter or a thousand millimeters. One thousand millimeters. It also has 10 decimeters and it's got a hundred centimeters. Um, so, or just plain old one meter. So we do, again, all of our measurements in metric. So this will all have meter in it somewhere. And then the last one here would be the analytical balance. And that's this guy. And what it does is just helps us to measure small amounts. We put something on top and it tells us right here how many grams it is. Gram is the basic unit of measurement for mass. <clears throat> so we use grams, we do not use ounces or pounds. That's bad, that's a no-no. Okay, so these are measuring things and some other tools that you'll be seeing. One is called a probe, and that's this guy right here. And he's just used to poke stuff, uh, especially when we get into dissections. This guy is good for kind of poking and pushing things around to get inside to see a little bit easier. We've got forceps, which is just a fancy name for tweezers. And so that's good for picking up stuff that you don't want to touch. We have a pipette, which is this little plastic thing. And that's good for um, transferring liquids from one container to another. You can see on here, and there's even little marks on it. So it's also used as a measuring device as well. We have plastic pipettes, which is great because they're disposable, so that way we don't contaminate and we don't wash, have to wash them out. We have this lovely thing called a scoopula. It's part scoop, part spatula. So it's a scoopula. And it's got a rounded edge here. And if you look at it sideways, it looks like that. And so that allows us to scoop out materials and then pour them somewhere else. And this long handle of it allows us to get into bottles where it's sometimes hard to reach. Now, being in biology, we like to look at stuff underneath the microscopes. So we have, of course, slides. We like to use those for looking at um, anything you want under the microscope. So you just put little samples right here Sometimes you put some water on it, sometimes you put a cover slip on it, but all these things go underneath the microscope and allow us to look at things much, much better. And then we have goggles. This pair right here to protect our eyeballs from any sort of chemicals that can get in there and ruin your vision, ruin your eyes for the rest of your life. So even though they look dorky, it's okay. You'd rather look a little dorky now than be blind for the rest of your life. <clears throat> and then we have a ring stand, this guy right here. Sometimes we put a Bunsen burner, which is fire, underneath, and then we can cook stuff on top, like a little beaker or something. Um, sometimes there's a little clamp that we can put test tubes in to hold on to. So it's, it's very versatile. We can use it for lots of different things. And test tube rack, which would be this guy right here. 
Uh, all you do is you, when you're doing experiments, you put your test tube in through one of these little holes here, and it holds on to it so it doesn't uh, slide out and break. So that's test tube rack. And the last page is devices, other things that we use. One would be a microscope, which is this guy down here. And I'm sure you guys have all had some sort of experience using a microscope, but we'll go through and we'll do a little introduction on how to use them because nothing bugs me more than spending my whole day running around table to table trying to focus and identify what you're supposed to be looking at. So we're going to teach you guys the right way to do this so that way, you know, I don't have to help you so much. Okay, another one is called a dissecting scope and that's this guy and it looks very similar to the microscope but instead of one eyepiece, there's two. Hang on, there is someone at my door. Okay, I'm back. So anyway, um, so microscope has one eyepiece, dissecting scope has two, which allows for stereoscopic vision, which makes it a little bit easier. The microscope gets really darn close to what it is it's looking at. Notice all the room here. That allows you to look at big samples, 3D samples. So this is um, basically a glorified magnifying glass, whereas this, you can see microscopic things. These, you can just see things in extreme detail. Okay, the next thing is a hot plate, which is this guy over here. And uh, just like it sounds, you can put a beaker on top, turn it up, and whatever is inside, you can heat it up, cook it, whatever you need to do. And the last one is a Bunsen burner, which we actually don't use very often in biology, more so chemistry. Um, and this is just a portable fire, so you can use that to heat up stuff as well. We like the hot plates because it's simpler and um, you know, freshmen and fire usually don't go well together, so we don't use this one very often. Okay, so make sure that you're familiar with uh, the identification and the general uses of these tools, so that way when I tell you, hey, go get this, go get that, you know what to grab and also how to use it. All right, thanks guys, see you tomorrow.